brawls aren't even the worst part of my job. Sure, you may take a beating, but at least you get the chance to defend yourself. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up, your back and neck feel stiff, your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. People were finally leaving the place. The bar was about to close. And I hadn't seen Mitchell go in or out. I had no choice. I see you took me up on my invitation. And you're smart. You knew not to come until my anti-fur regulars had all cleared out. I can't say no to good advice. Or good bourbon. Here's looking at you, Mr... Uh, what was your name? As far as I knew, La Iguana always stayed neutral. He played poker with Cassidy. But his joint was used as a gambling drop-off for O'Leary's operation. Did it make sense to keep faking it? Or was it too dangerous not to? Blackmore. John H. Blackmore. I knew it. Although your texting isn't half bad. Let's just say I represent certain sports lobbies I'd rather not talk about. I understand. My pleasure, Mr. Blackmore. You're natural. You're even better at pool than poker. This is much easier. No one can cheat. <laughs> you barely flinched when Cassidy decided to teach that ego a lesson. What do you want me to say? I was too shocked to be surprised, to be honest. The people I work for generally try to avoid these situations. Damn it. Well, nobody's perfect. Tell me, what do you really want with Cassidy? I just don't understand your motives. The truth is, I represent certain interests which make Desmond O'Leary my enemy. If you know anything about their rivalry, I rest my case. Don't worry about it. I was only curious. So, what about me? What do you want from me? No one comes to La Iguana just to drink and play pool. I'm looking for one of your regulars, Dr. Angus Mitchell. What for? We fought together during the war. I just want to say hi. Sure. Tell you what, I'll talk to Mitchell. Come back tomorrow night. You don't understand. I have to talk to him, or else. Or else what? You'd be losing your chance to make a pretty penny. I know how to reward my allies. You think I'd spend my time in this dump if all I cared about was the money? Please, cut the crap. Anything else? I've got friends in high places. Friends you don't want to meet. Oh, and you don't think I do? You think this dump would still be open otherwise? Please, 
Cut the crap. I hate to say this, but you're running out of options. I don't think Cassidy would be too happy about the role his poker buddy plays in O'Leary's gambling operation. I'm sure you understand that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call when Mitchell shows up. No. You're gonna call him right now, and you're gonna give him this message. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never-ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car, on surveillance duty, The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive, and that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out. With a bit of luck, that would make him nervous enough to force his hand. Now all I had to do was follow him. He went in without it. I wonder what's in it. We'll be just fine, don't worry. Gil, stand guard right here. If the cat shows up, you know what to do. I'll be back in an hour. Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there.
I did mess up a guy's face with an extinguisher once, but this kind is too heavy for my current needs. Hmm, what does this place have to hide? A dream catcher. It's supposed to protect children during the night. Trapping all evil in its spider web. If I'm not mistaken, these are incense sticks used in cleansing rituals. It could be an Ojibwa totem pole, in which case, the top animal would be a crane. According to this, the warehouse belonged to a Canadian import company. Will I need help? Who would I call? Smirnoff. Pier 36. Meet me in an hour. Black Sad. If you come in from Montgomery, it's the 6th sea-facing warehouse. What's going on? And bring the cavalry.
Don't you even think of screaming? I might not even talk. It looks like an arrowhead. Everything seems to prove that Gil is a Native American, and I'm almost sure that the woman in the picture is his mother. You know who always believe in you? Your mother. My mother never lost her faith in me. And I gave her plenty of reasons when I was a kid. I spent more time in detention than in the classroom. I was a big cat, so I always took it out on the little guys. Somehow, my mother managed to keep me in school until I got into college. But I never gave her reasons to believe in me then, either. My parents gave me a monthly allowance, which I spent mainly on poker games and the like. So after a year of college, I quit. Then Pearl Harbor happened. I got drafted and sent to Europe. They told me killing was my moral duty, but I discovered it could be addictive. Not all victims were Nazis. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah, a veteran outcast who never should have come back in the first place. And yet, my mother never ceased to... I also fought in the war. That's where I met Mitchell. They used me, like many of my people. And then they just tossed us aside. The first time Mitchell offered me to do this, I told him to take a hike. I wanted to get my act together, but I ended up begging him. I don't like Mitchell. I don't like the things he makes me do. I don't like that German rat either, but what I like least of all is myself. I don't like what I did during the war, and I don't like what I'm doing now. Do you know what it's like to kill a friend for the sake of the mission? Huh. But my mother, she always thought I'd make amends and start anew. Maybe it's time I did just that. It's number three.
Hmm. A list of names? Somehow related to chemical agents? Hey, You're it's all right. Don't be afraid, little girl. I'm a friend, okay? Vita, no hurt. Once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a brave seafaring little girl called Brunhilda. Hi, my name is Brunhilda, and I'm very happy, said Brunhilda. And then Brunhilda, who had a beautiful name, really beautiful, a really beautiful name, ran into someone very special. Oh, who was it? A sea cat called John. I'm a sea cat. My name is John. <laughs> Hi, John the cat. I really like sea cats. Hi, Bird Helder. I'm going to use my sea fairy wisdom to help you. Make some delicious pies. Ha! <laughs> I love pies. Which is your favorite? Wow, that's a very hard question. But John the Cat, it's the easiest question in the world. Let me show you how easy it is. My favorite pie is... Blueberry! <laughs> Whoa, Brunelda. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was about to say. John Brunhinda Front <laughs> Do play each look <laughs> uh, Okay Hi bird Why are you wearing that mask? Well Well, maybe we should get out of here. What do you think, Bird? And what about you, Boonhilda? Mm -hmm. 
Don't you think that? Subject, Brunhilde Gruner. Treatment, day 1,500. The patient's ability to speak continues to diminish. Now she can only pronounce the occasional word in German. Tissue degeneration persists. And yet, Perhaps due to drastic reduction of benzoprodine dosage and an increase of anupropion, we have observed a 3% of deceleration of said degeneration. Furthermore, and perhaps this is the best finding so far, the subject exhibits a mild recovery of her speaking. It's not a lot, and yet... We are on the right track. All hope is not lost. Subject, Craig Spano. Treatment, De Zero. The subject is a veteran baseball player who has lost speed, strength, and agility due to the regular aging process. The patient refers intense pain on the right scapula, most likely caused by an old injury. The goals of our medical approach are twofold. To relieve pain, caused by the prior injury so that the subject can play without symptoms and to help the patient regain the physical condition lost in the aging process, thus allowing him to perform at elite levels. Treatment. Day 120, the patient no longer feels pain when using his right arm, circumstance that allows him to pitch without fear. So far, the only side effect seems to be a slight euphoria experienced three hours after dosage, which subsides four hours later, taking the patient on an emotional roller coaster of sorts with bouts of mild trembling. Treatment. 
day 341. Moments of euphoria and boosted physical performance have become increasingly short while the ensuing periods of depression and weakness have become longer, including severe trem. Although we have met all therapeutic goals, we will proceed to terminate the treatment. In order to avoid causing irreparable physical and mental damage to the patient. Mitchell is cashing in by selling drugs to enhance athletes' performances. The worst part of Mitchell's scheme isn't that it's illegal or unethical, it's that he didn't even care about compromising the athlete's health. Gil? You know you're not allowed down here? You know you're not allowed. It's... You bastard! <laughs> I should kill you right here, right uh, now! Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I know you're testing drugs on that girl. Brunhilde? No! She's my daughter! She was born with a degenerative disease. A rare condition similar to the Angleman syndrome. There are only four known cases like hers, and none of the patients reach the age of five. But I couldn't give up. I continued to research and found something. It didn't make her better, but anyway, that same treatment used on healthy subjects seems to improve their stamina. And their reflexes? It also seems to improve their pain threshold. Somehow, the Reich heard about my experiments and tried to recruit me to create super soldiers. Yes, that Reich. We're talking late 30s Berlin. I escaped with Brunhilde and came to your country. But the American military also heard about me. I spent the entire war experimenting with drugs on soldiers. Some were highly effective, I must say. When the war was over, my experiments were discarded. I was forbidden all access to the drugs, and Brunhilde got worse. But then, God sent me Angus Mitchell. We had met during the war, and he came to offer me a deal. I would make drugs for athletes, and he would sell them. With my earnings, I could pay for Brunhilde's treatment. What else do you want me to say? 
I noticed Yale's name appears twice on your list of athletes. One mention was crossed out. Why? I don't know. A couple of months ago, Mitchell told me to prepare pills suited to his profile. But a week ago, he told me to stop. And then two days ago, he asked me to make them again. About those pills. What is he looking at? Don't dwell on it.